Welcome aboard the Papagallo right here in beautiful Morro Bay. Uh, we're on my private motor yacht, uh, enjoying a glass of Pinot. Uh, you've, but by now, you've picked up a, a bottle of Pinot with our uh, Necker on it that includes the recipe, the spice. Uh, we're going to get busy and show you how to prepare that dish that, that pairs with this Pinot. Uh, I mean, how about this weather? I mean, this is incredible. Uh, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do with a rack, get an eight bone rack, either from your butcher or the or meat department. Most, most of these racks are Frenched, meaning the bones are exposed. They usually come with a little too much fat on them. So what I always do is I just peel that fat off. So that's, that's all I need to do. Now the spice that you have, this is personal blend. It's really good stuff. I think you're going to enjoy it. But we take it liberally put it on the rack and you've got enough in that little package to make this work so there's our rack eight bone rack that's going to serve two people we serve this all the time on the yacht it's one of our signature dishes people love it so we are going to brown this off in a saute pan I've got my trusty induction stove I'm going to put a little olive oil in there and it's already heated up and you can do the rack, you can do this on your barbecue, and we're going to go to the oven with it to finish it. We're going to pull it out at a nice medium rare, but we're going to pan fry it here. We're going to turn our power up, and you should get a, a nice little sizzle. We're going to increase the power a little. Uh, this rack pairs very well with Pinot. Uh, when we deglaze the pan, though, we're going to use, we're going to use white wine. And the reason that we're doing that is we're, we're going to make a tomato coulis. And basically it's garlic, Roma tomato, or plum tomatoes, and butter. And then we deglaze it with white wine. And the reason I use white wine on this particular preparation, even though we're drinking Pinot, I use the white to keep the uh, color of the tomato coulis bright, a nice bright red. And you know, people eat with their eyes. And the, the reason I like to put a little brownness on in a saute pan, I'm going to make my coulis right in this pan, and that picks up all the flavor from the drippings and adds to the dish. I mean, it is real good. Uh, and uh, holy smokes, you know, it's what we do on a boat. Yeah, while we're waiting for something to cook, we drink, drink a little wine. And uh, this, uh, this whole series is about pairing wines with the foods. And uh, we do it all the time on board, and uh, you can do it at home, too. It's not that hard. Okay, the rack is nice and brown now. We're going to take it to the oven to finish the cooking. Uh, so we're going to take it out of there and go right to the oven. I'll put it in a little roast pan in the oven, and we'll finish it off. It'll take about another 10 minutes in the oven at 400 degrees. Now, to make the coulis, we're going to take a little butter, uh, and we're going to saute off the garlic a little bit and the tomatoes, get that butter started. I'm going to add the, uh, going to add the garlic, and we're going to add the chopped tomato. That's, a, that's the sound you want to hear right there. You want to hear that nice sizzle. That's, that's starting the, the cooking process. We're going to brown the garlic a little bit. Everything's working good. And this is going to be the base for the uh, coulis. You can notice that it's 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 light golden, but not real dark, and that's the way you want it to be. You don't want to you don't want to put too much brownness in it. The garlic's starting to brown up. Tomatoes are getting soft, and we're just going to finish this with a little white wine. And this is and we're going to blend this to use as a sauce underneath the lamb rack going to just take a quick taste. Always taste your food. Yep, that's there. Maybe just a little more wine. Okay, we're going to take that tomato, garlic, butter, and wine mixture. Okay, just get it into a container. I'm just using a little Bain Marie here. And that's all the good drippings from the lamb. And that's why I like doing the lamb in the saute pan, because I get more of the flavor than just letting it all go off on the barbecue. 
So if you uh, want to do this in the home kitchen, uh, this is a good way to do it. You take your blender, What we're doing, we're pureeing that. This is going to go underneath the lamb. Need a little bit more wine. There we got her. Oh yeah. Okay, here's the here's the lamb rack out of the oven. Beautiful brown. The, all the spice is kind of caramelized on the bones a little. We're going to put our meat thermometer in. Check our doneness. Uh, like to be at 120 to 125. Yeah, we're coming up to 120, 124. We're there, and that this is this is the most critical part. You don't want to overcook the lamb, so uh, use a meat thermometer. And if you let it go, if you put your thermometer in and it goes 120 very quick, you're already too much cooked. Uh, the lamb will continue to cook a little bit as it rests. This is, this is rested now about three or four minutes. It's ready to go. We're going to take our tomato coulis and just run it through a little strainer. A little bit of an angle here. Like that. That comes up here. We're going to take our rack. Set that there. And we just run, we do a double bone cut. Okay, separate between two bones. That's our end cut. Oh my gosh, Woo, this looks good. Uh, look, I hope you can get that color. Beautiful, moist, medium rare. We're just gonna crisscross it. At this point, you could put a little, uh, little uh, rosemary, a little Italian parsley uh, in between to dress it a little. Then, you know, typically I would serve maybe a, a fingerling potato with this, maybe some little baby zucchini, little baby squash. But really, that's the look we should get. Uh, and that's strictly by watching the temperature of the lamb. If you're doing it on the queue, doing it in a saute pan, 125 is the magic number. And it, like I said, it takes about 10 minutes uh, in the oven. It's, the oven gives you some safety because you can pull it out, check it, put it back in, uh, and you don't want to be punching a hole in the lamb every two or three minutes make, making the blood come out. One or two checks, you're good to go. I'm going to take a shot. We serve these. These are little lamb kebabs we serve as an appetizer, but I, I want to check my flavoring here. Uh, mm. We're there. Listen, if you enjoy cooking, uh, visit us at chefland.com or go to the YouTube channel or come on board the Papagallo. We have a blast.